I ain't afraid of no geek. Welcome to another Thursday and Geeks of the Week. I'm Mario. This week I wrap to my geeks, discuss one of my all-time favorite movies, and finally give you my top five comments for the month of September. Now on to the video. Steph, I wasn't showing off my Avengers Blu-ray. I was just very excited I got it. I'm sure you will understand when you get that sweet box set. Don't think I'm not envious that you're going to get it, and I'm sure you're going to get the last laugh because of it. And we will be shirt friends, and it will be glorious. Nikki, I know I'm a little late on this, but I hope you have fun at that Las Vegas Comic Expo. I'm sure you did. I can't wait to hear about all the derby times you had. Lulco's technical difficulties were having technical difficulties. And that's a double negative. You can't make a video like that. But I'm sure she'll be back soon, or at least I hope she will because we already missed her face. And Steph Pyro mentioned this fake nerd girl sign list. I also read it and found that completely stupid and condescending. Also, Pyro, thank you for the compliment. I hardly get them, so when I do, I do not know how to react. I usually awkwardly wave for no reason whatsoever. So with that said, and let me say this, I feel the same way about you and the rest of the geeks on this channel. You're all awesome, strong geek chicks. And if anybody ever questioned your geek cred, ooh, it would not go well for that person. I would not want to be them and be on the receiving end of what you would all do to them. By the way, not to get all political and before I get to the topic of my video, I'm a big supporter of PBS. I love Sesame Street. I love the Muppets. They always make me laugh. They're always entertaining to watch. In fact, here's two videos by them. The first one is a parody of Call Me Maybe called Cookie Maybe, done by the Cookie Monster. And the second one is Grover and Cookie Monster doing parodies of Doctor Who, The Avengers, Hunger Games, and Newsroom. They're always entertaining. They always make me smile. And us geeks need to step up our game because they brought it in those videos. As it is October, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite movies to watch this month. It also became one of my favorite fandoms, and that is Ghostbusters. It combines three great genres, comedy, horror, science fiction. It's very funny, there's some legit, surprisingly scary moments in it, and I love the science talk about capturing containing ghosts. I wish I could have seen Ghostbusters in theaters, but I wasn't even born then. In third grade, I was a dork who showed up to school dressed as a Ghostbuster for no reason whatsoever. In fact, years later when I was even out of high school, this guy came up to me and said, aren't you the kid who dressed up as a Ghostbuster in third grade and do you still like it? My reply to that was, hell yes and double hell yes. I delusionally refer myself to as the fifth Ghostbuster all the time and no, Lewis Tully does not count. I'm, I've gone as far as to even Photoshop my face into the picture and I even framed it and here it is. I am very proud of it. It hangs in the living room. So here's other cool Ghostbuster stuff I have. Cool comics. Awesome action figure. Cool Ghostbuster lanyard. Coin bank. You put money in it. That actually leads me to a question Pyro asked many moons ago. And that is, what's our most prized geek position? And in keeping with the theme, for me it's this. My exact replica of the PK meter. It's used to detect ghosts. So here, I'm going to turn it off for you guys. That means there's some paranormal activity. That means there's a lot of paranormal activity. There's basically a ghost somewhere on this side of the room. It's this really cool thing. I was so stoked when I got it. It looks exactly like it. It works just like it. You know, in fact, they released a ghost trap that's an, also an exact replica. But sadly, I was totally on getting it. Hopefully, they re-release it soon because I'll be the first to get it. If I was going to cosplay something, it'd be Ghostbusters. You know, I want to build that proton pack, but the sucker looks kind of difficult and complicated. Point is... I know Ghostbusters is an old movie, but I feel it still holds up very well. You know, it made me a fan of the supernatural. I'm not the type of person you should watch ghost shows with because I can be very obnoxious since I start to point out the inaccuracies since I do feel I'm a professional. I am a Ghostbuster. You know, it's a fandom that holds a very special place in my heart and it always will. Now on to comic books. Since it's the first week of the month, I'm going to give you my top five comments for the month of September. Starting with Chew Issue 28. USD agent Kobe along with his partner Pollo team up with FDA agent Caesar along with his partner background guy, a name I gave him because he just seems to blend in the background, or investigating why meat has started to explode. That's what she said. No Mario stay on task. Chu continues to be very entertaining. Its dialogue is sharp and witty and one of the best comic books out there. I always suggest you take your time to read this comic because panel for panel they have these great easter eggs in the back. The artwork is excellent. Chu never lets me down and it is the 5th best comic of the month. Number 4, Journey into Mystery issue 644. Loki pulls the double double cross as the 9 realms continue to burn because as a child Sardin never learned that playing with fire is not cool. 
Loki makes you ask yourself in this issue, can you do something completely selfish while at the same time it being a selfless act? I do not know the answer to that question, but I do know what Loki did in this issue was very touching. There's only one issue left in this arc, and then there's the aftermath issue, which will be the last issue for Karen Gillian on Journey into Mystery, and that makes me sad. Because as the start of his run on this comic, it has consistently been one of the best comic books out there. But I am happy it's not going out with a whimper, but with a bang. Another great issue this month. Number 3, Manhattan Projects, Issue 6. This is a sci-fi hit set in World War II and it's about the secret science organization known as Manhattan Projects. In this issue it introduces you to a new character, Helmut Blüter, the German rocket scientist who worked for the Nazis and was later forced to work for the Russians. Hickman knows how to write great characters. He can make you feel sympathy for someone you should hate, and it is a mark of a great writer. What makes this series most unique to me is the colorist Jordan Bellari. I love the way he uses his bright colors in contrast with the dark ones. It really makes the artwork pop and it situates the story. This comic is mostly for sci-fi fans, so if you're a big time sci-fi fan, you won't go wrong by picking this up. Numero dos, Spider-Man issue 5. And this is the conclusion before the crossover between the regular Marvel U Spider-Man and the Ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales. They find Mysterio who's responsible for the terror between the two universes and settle that conflict. This miniseries was a lot of fun. At the beginning of it, I was very doubtful, highly skeptical, but it completely proved me wrong. This comic made me look stupid and I couldn't be happier about it because I love reading great Spider-Man stories and this is one of them. Peter Parker's parting advice to Miles Morales was very funny. If you know anything about Spider-Man's history and past, you won't be able but to help but to laugh and to smile at it. No spoilers, but they do leave the door open for a sequel. And if if Bendis is going to write it like this, if they're going to have the artist Sarah Pacelli, count me on board if they decide to make one. Last but not least, number one, Punk Rock Jesus issue three. And this comic is about the reality show starring the clone of Jesus named Chris. And the story thus far has been about all the people who've made it possible. From Gwen, the mother they chose to give birth to the clone to, Thomas McHale, the head of security, Slate, the perfect show producer, but in this issue we get to see Chris more. Time moves fast as we see his childhood and by the middle of it, he's already in high school, so we're starting to get a feel for more of the character of Chris. There's a scene towards the end of this issue that made me say, holy shit. As the narrative for the story continues to fold, I'm loving the direction it's going. It's bold, it's fearless, and I just don't know what to expect next. This was definitely the best comic of the month. So that's it for me. Remember to like, subscribe, check out the other more geek busting geeks, and stay geeky. Hmm. That's not good.